Welcome back to another video. We are right in the middle of a 30 day fishing series where I'm out on the ice fishing every single day and putting out a video. And last night I actually set up camp to fish for walleyes during that nighttime window. And uh, it was just such a mess. My, uh, my snowmobile like basically blew up. So I was dealing with that for a while and luckily some guys helped me out. But yeah, basically long story short, I did not film it all last night because it was just too much and I just ended up going to bed. So um, anyway, this is the next morning and we're gonna try and catch some walleyes for you. So that's pretty much the plan for this video. Yeah, that was a good fish. Finally got him to go after he circled around a few times. I'm thawing out the big camera here because I've been having nothing but problems with that GoPro right there. So hopefully this footage makes it into the video. <laughs> but there's another Walter. Lots of good activity this morning. And uh, the fish seem a little bit apprehensive, but there's just enough fish that, you know, you're going to get some of them to bite. And uh, yeah, just rocking the buckshot spoon in the green variety. So yeah, it's been a, a good morning of action. And unfortunately, you're not going to be able to see all of the catches from this morning due to technical issues. But definitely some Walters coming through the ice. To say I'm frustrated would be like a major understatement. So I noticed on the GoPro over there, um, there was an error after one of my catches. So I plugged it into the computer and basically the majority of the footage that I've shot today was Kapui. Caught a good number of fish this morning and it's looking like the majority of it will not be in this video, unfortunately. I formatted that GoPro and I'm gonna hope that we capture some footage, but from this point forward, if I catch a fish, I'm turning this thing on and showing it to you. Yeah, if anybody's interested in purchasing a GoPro, I have a good, reliable Go GoPro available. Really good GoPro if, if you're interested. <laughs> there we go. Ooh. All right, and just for safety, I'm gonna turn on the big cam and, and show the fish off right over here. And there we go. Another one on the green buckshot. Had a little lull there, kind of in this early afternoon period. But let's see, Kyle, this fish was not going anywhere. There we go. But this guy came through and he was hungry. <laughs> so look at that, that is a gorgeous fish. They're just so clean out here. There's just so many fish and you know, there's so much fishing pressure on Red Lake, um, but there's just so much water and this whole lake is just a big giant muddy basiny flat area and obviously, you know, there's a lot of, there's different uh, bottom composition in different areas, but basically like there is a lot of room for these fish to roam around and look for food, get him back. And it's interesting too, this lake is really tailor made for walleyes. So what walleyes love to do is they love to just roam around and look for food. So you're never gonna like drill a hole and be like, oh, there's a bunch of walleyes just sitting down there. 
Um, they're not going to stick there. They don't just sit in one place. They're constantly moving, roaming, looking for food. And there's just a lot of food all over the place, whether it's perch or minnows. And basically the fact that this lake is somewhat structureless means that basically those fish can just kind of go anywhere. They can go deep to shallow. They can go shallow to deep. They can run the contours that basically don't exist because this whole lake is so insanely flat. This is just tailor-made for walleyes to run around and feast on basically whatever they find. They can just keep swimming until they run into something. And uh, one thing I've noticed on this lake is that sometimes depth will matter. So maybe, you know, they'll be going in seven feet, but out in 11 feet, they're not biting as well. So just overall depth can matter. But aside from that, um, it kind of doesn't really matter where you set up. Basically what I try to do is I try to just give myself as much space away from other people as possible. I think maybe if you put yourself right in the middle of the monkey box, that might not be quite as good because maybe some other anglers will intercept fish that might have came to your hole. Um, but there's a lot of fish and my advice would be just to set up as far away from as far away from other people as possible because I think that might up your odds slightly and then also you don't have to hear some other guy yelling in a shack or some other guy talking to a camera which can also be sort of awkward so anyway that's just my advice there we go that one just came right in and scarfed it and that's a pretty that's a pretty good one right there too Ooh. All right, you could just mellow out. That would be great. Get that big cam on. Another one right there on the spoon. Beauty. So one thing that I've noticed just like the handful of times that I've been up to Red Lake this year is that it's been a really good evening bite. And uh, sorry that you're having to hear the bubbler, but I'm not gonna turn it off. I'm just gonna finish what I'm saying. It's been a really good evening bite, that kind of flash bite window, and then actually beyond that into uh, the night a little bit. So I would imagine um, that basically a lot of the lake, you know, once it starts to get some cool temperatures, I would imagine that it won't be long until people are gonna be pulling houses out here like in mass, like bunches and bunches of houses. Um, it won't be long until that happens, and when that does, I think people are going to experience some good nighttime bites here. And uh, yeah, it's one of those deals, if you come up here just for the day, make sure to stick around into the dark. Bring your headlamps so that you can see and you don't lose all your stuff. But uh, make sure to stay a little bit longer than you normally would, because that flash bite as the sun is going down can be pretty key. But after that, for the next hour or so, seems to be a good bite too. All right, Walter, Walter, Walter. So I've decided that I don't really mind that we lost a bunch of footage. I was really bummed earlier, but uh, now it just seems like the fish are super snappy and they're coming through and I'm getting a little distracted by my phone, so I should probably stop doing that, but the fish are biting. It's awesome. All right, so we're getting kind of into that like mid late afternoon window where the bite is kind of slowed down. So what I'm going to do is because uh, I had some snowmobile issues last night, I'm actually going to pack things up. And I'm going to call my buddy who's over on the lake and he's going to honestly probably pull me off. So kind of a grind. But uh, now seems like a decent si decent time to start packing up. And I'm also getting kind of hungry too. So um, there's a walleye on my bait. Hold on. Oh, he came in fast. Oh, shoot. Come on. I'm on back now. I think I still have the minnow head. When you're jigging, you can kind of feel 
um, just based on the weight and the amount of friction if there's if there's still a minnow head on there. It actually feels like maybe I don't have a minnow head. They're not moving in on it, so I'm gonna reel in really quick. I have some minnow minnow tails I can tip with. Looks like they took off though, but I'm still gonna get back down all speedy like. That's one tiny little piece of advice I can give you. If uh, if you're just using the minnow heads, don't let the minnow tails get too far away. Because you never know when you're going to have to uh, toss one back on for the throwback after you lose a minnow head. You don't want to have to run over to the minnow bucket. and um, Now the dead stick is going crazy over there. I'm sure... Oh, he's back. Let's see. Or is he just kind of roaming around here? looking at the dead stick. Oh, he's, he's right there. Both of them are still here. Oh, I thought I got tipped there. There. You can do it. Take a snap. Don't be afraid. Turn around. He's looking at me now. Oh, I missed him. Definitely don't have a minnow head on there. Go back for another tail. Ooh, grab the tail, pop it on there as fast as possible. I don't even care where, where you hook it. Get back down quick. And please tell me he's still in the area. Oh he is, here he is. God, he even came back and looked at it again. Oh, here he is. Got him. How's that for an adventure? Oh, it's a good one too. I got a good attitude coming out of the shallow water here. Well, how's that for a lesson for you? Lesson number one, walleyes are not, are not the brightest creatures. <laughs> so this one came back like a bunch of times and I stuck him a few times and he got my minnow head first and foremost. And then he got one of the minnow tails. And then after that, he came in and bit the minnow tail again. So that's a good lesson. Keep track of your minnow tails. Let him go. There he goes. Keep track of your minnow tails because you never know when you're gonna have to have uh, basically meat ready to go super fast. Um, when you're fishing in a house like that, this, uh, when you're fishing in a house like this, that can be really critical. So I don't have to run over the minnow bucket, grab a minnow, stick the head on, drop it down. Those walleyes are gone by the time you get there. Um, if you're just roaming around on open ice hole hopping, another option too is to carry one of those bait pucks with you. So you always have fresh minnows ready, but there's nothing quicker than just grabbing the tail that you pinched off like five minutes ago or whatever. So I actually got a big pile of them right there in the ice. So always keep your tails handy. Now let's just hope the GoPro worked for all of that. So I guess what I was getting at is that, there you go. No walleyes are biting, nothing's happening, time to pack up. Uh, obviously there's some aggressive walleyes still down there willing to bite, but I still need to get going. I got too much stuff to pick up. I gotta figure out getting my uh, snowmobile towed back. And uh, anyway, thanks for following along. Um, like I said earlier, like we're gonna be putting out 
videos every single day for 30 days in a row. And you can see in the title which video we're on right now. But anywho, I'm going to uh, call it quits here and I will see you tomorrow.